In 2014, Cowboys running back DeMarco Murray was the NFL's Offensive Player of the Year. He led all running backs in yards. In fact, he had just about 500 more yards than the next closest back. It was truly a year for the ages. And here's what's crazy. Despite rushing for over 1,800 yards, earning all-pro status, and leading the Cowboys to a 12-4 record, he never played another snap for them. And after just three more seasons, the man retired from the NFL. This is wild. Why did he not re-sign with the Cowboys after his stellar season? And how did things fall apart so quickly? To get a better understanding, we need to go back. But first, I'm excited to announce the return of SeatGeek. For those of you who've watched my videos in the past, you know that SeatGeek was a staple in my channel. Since I show highlights in every video, much of the time I make no money off the ad revenue. So sponsors like SeatGeek have allowed me to continue to do what I do. Anyways, live events are back. And whether it's football games or other sports or even concerts, SeatGeek puts all these tickets from across the web into one area, making buying simple. SeatGeek rates each ticket on a scale from 0 to 10 to make sure that you know you're getting a good deal. And lastly, use code KTO for $20 off your next purchase. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app. I gotta give a thanks to SeatGeek for the sponsor. Now let's get back to the video. So this story is really from two points of view. DeMarco Murray's perspective and the Dallas Cowboys perspective. I will cover both when needed. Let's look first at Murray's side of things. Murray, he picks it up, he's in trouble. Shakes a tackle though, here he comes. 15, 20, he's got a convoy. 40, 50, Murray, he'll score! Oklahoma answers with a of the Back in 2011, he had just capped off a pretty legendary college career. He finished up his four years at Oklahoma with some big time school records. His versatile skill set impressed NFL scouts, leading to the comparison of Reggie Bush. To be compared to the NFL's version of Reggie Bush is both good and bad. That means you're extremely explosive and can do a lot of things, but the negatives are that you're not going to be a workhorse, and the ability to stay healthy is a huge question mark. Despite Murray playing mostly all his college games for four years, he was always dinged up. And overall, Murray was seen as a second to third round pick which is solid. Now, let's go to the Cowboys' perspective. They had just come off their worst season in six years. This led to the firing of head coach Wade Phillips and the promotion of their offensive coordinator and interim head coach Jason Garrett to the new head coach following the 2010 season. Despite a very poor defense at the time, Garrett's offensive-minded philosophy imagined upgrading their already stacked offense with even more pieces. In the first round of the 2011 draft, they selected offensive tackle Tyron Smith, and then in the third round, they saw Murray on the board. And despite having running back Felix Jones on their roster, they decided to pick Murray. The local and national media didn't love this Murray pick, and they saw him as a backup. Maybe a guy who would be used in the pass game and get a few carries here and there, but overall, he's probably just an insurance type of player for the starter Felix Jones. And for the first few games of the season, the media's fears seemed to be coming true. Murray was listed third on the depth chart. Throughout the first five games of the 2011 season, the Cowboys' offensive production had mostly come through the air. In their fifth game of that stretch, which ended in a loss to the Patriots, starting running back Felix Jones sustained an ankle sprain, which would knock him out for a few games. This led to the most playing time DeMarco Murray had received thus far, which led to an uneventful 34 yards on 11 carries. For the team's following game, they decided to have Deshard Choice take on the starting role, and Murray became the backup, still staying true to that original depth chart. Deshard had two carries early in the game, but then he suffered an ankle sprain, just like Felix Jones. Now, early in the first quarter, Murray was going to be the first string back for the rest of this game. This was a huge opportunity to impress the coaching staff, this could be his chance to prove that he's ready for more snaps. So, how'd it go? This is what happened next. Romo on a delay, hands up. To Murray, to Marco Murray. Going all the way for the touchdown. 91 yards for the score. Hands it off to Murray. 
with the pitch going to Murray off the left side. And there's the speed. Back to Murray. And off to Murray. Murray with the first down, now satisfied with just winning the chain. The pitch going to DeMarco Murray. Murray tiptoeing down the sideline, spacing. They go again to Murray. Murray makes it! What a cut by Murray! And finally goes down at around the 30 yard line. Murray on the pitch. And here is Murray, and he's going to move ahead of Emmett Smith. Truly, this is one of the most shocking performances in recent NFL history. A rookie running back, who had never started a game, including this one, set the all-time single-game rushing record for the Dallas Cowboys, passing Hall of Famer Emmett Smith. It was also the second greatest rushing performance by a rookie in NFL history. Now, both the Cowboys and DeMarco Murray were the obvious winners from this game, but the biggest loser was the other Cowboys running back, Tashard Choice. After rumors that he was going to be traded prior to the regular season, the Cowboys made the choice to keep him on the team. But following DeMarco Murray's outstanding performance, they cut Choice, just simply due to how well Murray played. Talk about the brutal reality of the NFL. Choice would get signed by Washington right away and actually had a chance for a revenge game against the Cowboys immediately, but it didn't go so well. Anyways, let's get back to DeMarco Murray. Not only did Murray set that single game rushing mark originally as a backup, but he would also rush for a total of 466 yards in a three game stretch, also breaking another Emma Smith record. Murray would go on to finish his rookie season with one of the highest yards per carry in the entire NFL and was easily the steal of the 2011 NFL Draft. It's safe to say, the media who questioned this pick previously ate their words. Over the course of the next two years, Murray continued to cement himself as the Cowboys' top back. 2013 would mark his first 1,000-yard season and his first Pro Bowl nomination. At this point, the Cowboys' offense had turned into a top five unit in the NFL, and everything seemed to be looking up for both the organization and DeMarco Murray. However, there was still one concern. Throughout the first three years of his career, injuries had been a problem during each of those seasons. His rookie year ended with a fractured ankle. Then he missed six straight games in 2012 because of a sprained foot, and then throw in two games in 2013 for a sprained MCL. Despite playing at a high level, the concern over Murray's longevity was still very real. He had become the workhorse back that people didn't think he could be, but he had also yet to play a full season. So entering 2014, which was the final year on his rookie contract, Murray's main goal was to stay healthy. Obviously being able to continue to play would benefit both parties, but instead of playing it safe, someone on the Cowboys, whether it was the coaches or Jerry Jones, decided, let's see how long this dude can hold up. Not for 17 on a couple of other occasions. 21 yards for Tony, and there goes Murray, inside the 10, juking and faking and scoring. Second down, back to Murray, cuts it to the inside, and Murray to the end zone! Touchdown, Dallas! Started five games last year, now takes over and gives it to DeMarco Murray. That settles you in a game. Murray inside the 30, accelerates to the 20, Murray at the 10. Close second, it worked very well. Look at that effort by Murray. Murray inside the 30s, pass to 100 for the Knights. From the 49 on first down, it is Murray. And he picks up another first down and more, spinning. Offensive lineman here on a third and one. Murray, left side, first down and more. That's the record. DeMarco Murray all the way down inside the 25. And a new single season rushing leader for Dallas. A 32 yard run. And congratulations to DeMarco Murray. This was the season of a lifetime, setting records and achieving the NFL's Offensive Player of the Year. So let's go back to the original question. Why did DeMarco Murray never play for the Cowboys again? Let me give you a quick history lesson about running backs. If there was one position that fits the NFL's infamous phrase, not for long, 
it's running backs, especially for backs who take on huge workloads. Terrell Davis was the best back in the league from 1996 to 1998, then injuries quickly derailed his career. Jamal Anderson led the league in carries in 1998, then he barely managed to play three more years. Then Larry Johnson set the all-time record for carries in 2006, only to never run for a thousand yards again. When we look at DeMarco Murray, he carried the ball a staggering 436 times in 2014. On top of that, he broke his hand in week 15, got surgery the following day, and still kept on playing like nothing changed. From his perspective, in a contract year, he did everything in his power to prove himself. But gutsy performances and big time accolades mean pretty much nothing when it comes to the actual business of football. Let's go look at the Cowboys' perspective. They had just managed to get a player of the year type of guy for next to nothing financially, which was a big win for the organization. But when thinking about re-signing him to another contract, they had a handful of reasons to not think too seriously about it. A, what history says about running backs like Murray who take on huge workloads wasn't in his favor. B, Murray had been hurt every single year, even though he played through it in 2014. C, running backs in the modern NFL are more replaceable than ever. Modern analytics show that signing big running back contracts and drafting them high in the draft isn't a good idea. D, many argue that the Dallas offensive line made DeMarco Murray, which was true to an extent. They were the best in the NFL at the time, and some were still on rookie contracts that they would have to eventually pay. And lastly, E, this really boiled down to re-signing either Des Bryant or DeMarco Murray. Both were all pros in 2014. They had enough money to be serious about one of these dudes. And really, the question was receiver or running back? History shows that receiver is the better move, and it's exactly the route the Cowboys chose. Murray would field offers during free agency asking for eight to 10 million. Dallas, sitting at an offer of six million, didn't make the cut. And Murray ended up choosing the team that perhaps he shouldn't have, the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I think about DeMarco Murray. Sell out going to Philly. Oh my God, here I go. Back up, bro. Hey, I let's sit down here. Although this was heartbreaking for Dallas fans, this seemed like the best move financially at the time for him. But in hindsight, it was the worst move that Murray could have made. Right before signing with the Eagles, fellow running back Frank Gore had planned on going there, but for some reason, he backed out last minute. This was peculiar and not a great sign, but for Murray, this is how things would play out. 2015, the Eagles offense was a train wreck. They couldn't figure out how to use Murray, he had a horrible season statistically, complained that their offense sucked, Chip Kelly was fired, and they traded Murray after the season to the Titans. 2016, the Titans figured out how to use Murray and he bounced back, but with a certain rookie running back looming, it was only a matter of time before Murray was on his way out. 2017, Murray falls off rapidly, showing signs of noticeable aging, and the reality of the NFL running back who takes on a huge workload comes to light. This was the season that the torch was officially passed to Derrick Henry. Subsequently, Murray was released from the team. Yeah, a little news. I've decided to retire from the game of football today. That's not bad, man. man. <laughs> it turned out that the Cowboys were right to not bring back Murray. They quickly moved on and drafted Zeke Elliott in 2016, who they went the complete opposite direction with. The team now looks completely different six years later as does Murray, now with Oklahoma helping out as a coach for his alma mater. I'm sure DeMarco Murray is happy currently, but it's still wild to think that he never played for the Cowboys again after what he had done. And then after spending three more years on two separate teams, things just went down so quickly. Even if he angered some fans when he left Dallas, I'm sure Cowboys fans will always hold a place in their heart for this dude. A third round pick, who was thought of as possibly a return man or insurance backup turned into an NFL Offensive Player of the Year during his rookie contract. And even Titans fans shouldn't forget this man. Even though Derrick Henry has made the disappearance of Murray almost unnoticeable, he still put together some great moments for them as well. Like this one. No running. Murray. Guys to get to the corner. Down to DeMarco Murray. Still inbounds. DeMarco 